Hello, welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on May 25th, 2021. Second day, uh, since I got the uh, since I got vaccinated. Well, technically, this is day one because I got vaccinated uh, yesterday evening. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, no turning to zombie yet. No uh, turning green and uh, growing weird body parts, but. Uh, I remember yesterday when I got the shot, I got Pfizer, by the way, um, I didn't feel the needle going in, uh, hardly anything, like, I felt the initial, uh, pinching sensation, or poking sensation, and it, it barely hurt at all, but today I woke up and I feel like my body just got run over by a truck, and that same truck that ran me over probably backed over my left arm just for fun, because if I don't feel my left arm, uh, if I don't touch my left arm, if I just go by what my left arm is telling my brain, uh, it feels like my left arm has swollen up to twice its normal size and it's all heavy and sore and just very achy, very uncomfortable. Uh, but then I put my right hand on it and no, it's just still a regular left arm, feels just the same. So yeah, it's, uh, that's basically what's going on right now. So we continue the talk about uh, being attacked from behind, a uh, continuation of our survival Saturday where we talked about uh, assessing, um, setting up for the initial attack. If it's a tap on the shoulder or if someone just uh, yell at you from behind, how do you deal with something like that? How do you turn and protect yourself? How do you, how do you deal with things like that? Today we are going to ramp it up uh, one notch and we are going to deal with uh, what if you're being restrained uh, in a threatening fashion, such as a, a bear hug or a choke uh, or a headlock? I need to fix uh, Bruce's arm because he's all looking all torn up and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, you get the idea. We're going to look at uh, how to deal with uh, this kind of uh, threatening uh, restraint being uh, choked and grabbed and uh, thrown around from behind. Now some people will say, well, exactly how bad is this, being attacked from behind? Well, I, I think we can all agree, uh, no matter if you've ever been in a fight or not, it's not fun. It, it wouldn't be fun. I can tell you, two of my more serious injuries resulting from fighting happened when I got jumped from behind. The first time, when I was uh, like 15 years old, I got into a fight uh, with two schoolyard bullies. And even when I was 15, I was pretty good at what I did because I started training in martial arts when I was eight. So by the time I was 15, I was uh, not a newbie, not no stranger to this kind of fisticuffs and kicking and punching and throwing. I was very confident I could take two of them. Heck, when I was 15, I probably thought I could take them even if there were 10 of them. And that's the kind of mentality I had as a teenager. Well, halfway through uh, the fight, one of them got behind me, jumped on my back, and then uh, basically got his arms thrown around my neck and and the person in front of me tackled my leg and I got, went down on the floor uh, and the person behind uh, that was riding on my back uh, grabbed my arm and yanked my arm up behind me and dislocated my, fore, uh, my, my elbow. That took a long time for me to recover and to have the confidence to fight again after that. The second time when I got messed up from behind was during a sparring session where I was doing a two, uh, one person against two Krav Maga drill, and I went after the person in front and was going to get him out of the game, and then just as I went to punch him or uh, and, and grab him and try to get him uh, out of the picture, the person behind me came just he just came up behind me and he went uh, he did this really short punches to my floating rib like this. Just like that, like 
<laughs> there was no form to it, no art to it. He just basically came up behind me and started hammering away at my floating rib. And it wasn't until after the sparring session that I realized something was really messed up inside and that there was this sharp, sharp pain in my uh, uh, rib cage. And I ended up uh, cracked uh, my floating rib in that uh, sparring bout. And that again took several months before I could recover and took a, long, a lot longer before I had the confidence to uh, get physical again. So getting jumped from behind, even when you are uh, quote unquote high ranking or uh, know what you're doing, it's no fun. It just, it just isn't, okay? It's a bad situation. But hopefully, hopefully after today's video, we'll make it a little bit better for some of you. Well, hopefully you never have to find out. Hopefully you never actually have to get jumped from behind. But if it ever happened, hopefully this will make it better. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about what not to rely on. What not to rely on. And I'm going to focus on a few techniques that we see so commonplace, especially in children and women's self-defense. And it's given as advices by friends and family. People who don't know self-defense, they tell you, if someone grabs you from behind, you, you do this, you stomp on their foot, you, you stomp on their shin, and then you kick them in the groin, and then you poke them in the eye. Right? One of the four, one of the four. This four always come up. But I want to show you guys why I'm not going to say they are useless techniques, but why you shouldn't rely on these techniques unless you really know that it's going to work. And why you should develop other techniques, other mindset, other principles that you can use before you have to resort to these. Okay, let's take them one at a time. Let's look at the first one. Someone grab you from behind, like a bear hug, either under your arm or over your shoulder, or someone locking their arm around your neck. Okay, number one, some a lot of people say stump on their foot, stump on their toe. Huh? There's a problem with this. The stumping on the foot and the toe. It's largely depending on it, what kind of footwear you are wearing versus what kind of footwear the person is wearing. Now this technique works in the dojo almost every single time when no one's wearing anything. Right? When, when I'm barefoot, you are barefoot, I stomp on your toe, it's going to hurt a lot. But, and I have actually demonstrated this to my own sister when I told her why toe stomping is a very risky thing. The one time I asked her to stomp on my toe, and I, I, I said, I'm going to grab you, and then you can stomp away all you want. It's not going to work. And she stomped on my toe, and then she found out that I was wearing steel toe boots. She ended up twisting her own ankle because she stomped down so hard, and it wasn't, there was no gift to it because it's steel toe boots, and she ended up falling down on the floor. If I wasn't holding on to her, she would have just collapsed, right? So stomping on someone's foot is dangerous, especially when it's out there in dark alley. You're not quite sure what the person's wearing. You might see that they're wearing boots, but you wouldn't know if it's still reinforced, still capped, or if that boot is thick enough. And if I have like proper hiking boots on, it doesn't even need to be steel capped. You can stomp on it all you want. It's just not going to hurt all that much. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to squish my toe. It's not going to uh, hurt me to the point that I want to let go of you. Most likely, it's just going to uh, make me very angry, and I'm going to change from restraining you to start hitting you, right? So stomping on the foot is dangerous. Don't rely on that technique. 
Okay? Unless you know for sure, you look down and you see the person wearing ninja boots or toppy boots or, 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 or sandals or flip-flops, then sure, then stomp away. No problem. Okay? And like I said, also it relies heavily on what you are wearing yourself. Right? If you are wearing high heels, a lot of people say high heels great. If you stomp on someone's foot with high heel, it hurts a lot. I have got stomped on, uh, on my foot with high heel before. Uh, it does hurt a lot. But you know what also happens? Is the person doing the stomping usually lose their balance because it's high heel. So even when you're wearing high heel, you think you can do more damage. You might end up breaking your heel. You might end up twisting your foot. And great, now you can't run away. You can't get anywhere. You're trapped. So be very careful when espousing the virtue of stomping on the foot. It works if you do it to the right person at the right time and when they are wearing inferior foot protection and you are wearing nice and solid shoes. But there's a very big chance that you wouldn't be able to tell in the dark, especially, okay, well, I'm going to say that especially for those of us who are blind, there's no way for us to tell if what the person's wearing. So don't rely on that foot stump. Number two, another common technique that been uh, suggested to people, again, in uh, women and children self-defense is stomp the shin. Okay? Take your foot and bring your knee up and stomp back against the shin. Stomp back against the shin. Again, this is one of those techniques that if you have a super strong kick, if you have super good balance, all the more power to you, it probably will work. Okay? But it's one of those techniques that work a lot better in the dojo than on the street. In the dojo, when everyone's wear barefoot, when the floor is nice and even, nice and padded, so when I want to stomp, I want to stomp, I want to stomp, okay? I'm very balanced, no problem, right? And the person behind me is going to let go because no one wants to take that on the shin repeatedly. But would it look like that on the street? Most likely not. Why? If the person behind me suddenly take me by surprise and grab me and I try to do this leg stump, all they have to do is shift me to the side and I lose my balance. They pull me to the side and I lose my balance. I have to put my foot back down to save myself from falling over. And not to mention, I have done this to people before in self-defense sparring session. When someone tried to stomp my shin, all I have to do is move my leg a little. Okay, look at how small your target is. Okay? If, if you want to get me on the shin, your target uh, is only about uh, three inches across, which means I just move my leg a little bit and you'll miss. And what's going to happen if you miss is I close my leg around your leg. Now your leg is trapped and I throw you down on the floor. You're down on your face. I'm on your back. Really bad idea. Okay, so unless you are so good at this, you have super strong leg, you have super good balance, and you can do it without telegraphing, huh? fast like that, then don't rely on stomping on the shin with your mule kick, because most likely you will end up eating dirt. You will end up face down on the ground. Right? Number three, uh, one of the worst one is still a mule kick into the groin, into the groin, okay? This one is just a big no-no, okay? You do not want to do this. Again, most attackers, most guys, especially guys, those of us that's been in physical altercation often enough, we are so accustomed 
to read him when someone's going for a growing with their feet, with their leg. The moment, especially if you're in close contact, the person's grabbing onto you, the moment your balance shift, you put, pick up your one leg to stomp back into the groin. I can feel it. Okay? The moment you do that, all I have to do is jerk you to the side and down you go because you're standing on one leg. At the moment you do that, I just spread my leg or turn my hip or cross my leg over. You're going to miss your target. And again, I'm going to trap your foot between my leg and turn and slam you to the ground. Okay? So this is why the stomp back into the groin is a lousy idea. Okay? Another reason why it's really bad is because the person behind you, all they have to do is jostle you one to one side or push you away or pull you a little bit and it's going to mess up your kick. Okay? The next one. The next one. Uh, I was just going to show four, but I'm going to do five. I like number five. The next one, again, very commonly referred to in self-defense program for beginners. Elbow back. Right? This uh, back elbow into the belly. Uh. Uh. Now, I am an elbow person. I, I do a lot of attack with my elbows. But this back elbow attack is not usually going to work unless you follow it up with something. Uh, why doesn't it work? Because the nature of elbow is distance. Eh? If I'm this close to the person, uh, if the person is uh, uh, four inches behind me uh, with their arm around me, around my neck, then I whoa, elbow back, great, a lot of power. Right? But if the person sends me it's going to throw my elbow back, and the, all they have to do is shove me away, and my elbow is going to go wide, I'm going to miss my target. And what happened when I miss my target? Okay, is my elbow, since I extend my elbow behind me, trying to hit him. Now my arm is behind me, and all they have to do is hook my arm and pull my arm up to my shoulder blade. Now I'm in a bad situation. I'm in the arm lock. Okay, so this elbow in the back can work sometimes, but again, the, the margin for failure is high because you need to be close enough. And you need to count on the person is not very well conditioned. And the person is not very well conditioned. Why? Because if the person is, and I'm not even talking about uh, like a UFC fighter or a master martial artist. I'm talking about guys who are on the street, who get into fights often enough that they pay attention to conditioning their body. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of hoodlums, a lot of gangsters, they'll do that. Now, when they're sitting around, smoking pot, drinking beer, they'll hit each other. They'll smack each other and play games like who give up first. And then uh, if, if you, I'm going to hit you, and then you hit me, I'll hit you, and you hit me. And if, if you give up first, I, I, I get to uh, sleep with your girlfriend. They, they play games like that, okay? So... You got to count on these hoodlums sometimes have very well conditioned body. Which means you do this elbow in the stomach. Ugh! Yeah, they can probably take quite a few of these. Uh, which means you are wasting your energy while pissing them off big time. Last but not least, another really bad example uh, used in self-defense is the eye poke. Uh, someone gets their arm around your neck and then you uh, reach back, trying to poke them in the eye. Never mind that you can't even see where the eyes are, right? Uh, if, the, if Bruce here is choking me, choking me, pulling me down to the ground, 
I'm going to be so off balance. And one thing, this is a true human biology, body mechanic, that a lot of people don't know about. Now I'm going to tell you guys because this is going to save your life. When someone is choking you, when your neck is being pulled or restrained, you will have a very hard time getting your arms above your shoulder level. This is just the way human body is made. Okay, this is why in the old days, uh, if you see people that hang themselves or people that got lynched, very few of them can reach up and grab the rope and take the slack off the rope, even if their arms were free. Most of the time, when people are being strangled, their arm will only go up to chest level. Uh, it's really hard to get your arm up there. Why? Because when your arms go beyond, go above shoulder level, it activates your trap muscle and it presses your trap muscle into your neck, which is counterintuitive. Your whole goal is to try to get the strangulation to stop. So your body will not contribute to strangling yourself by pressing your trap muscle, your arm, into your own neck. This is why that when you're being strangled, it's extremely hard to get your arm to actually do this uh, poking in the eye thing. Uh, it, it, I, I'm so confident that this is uh, uh, that just doesn't work, but I demonstrate this with people all the time. Of course, it's easy for me to say. If someone really poked me in the eye, it just hurts a lot. It doesn't really, not going to make me any more blind. But yeah, try it sometime. Try it sometime. If, if you have someone to uh, get someone to uh, just wrap their arm around your neck and really put on the pressure, see how easy it is to poke them in the eye. I'm almost going to guarantee that you're going to find it really hard. First, your arm refused to move up far enough. Second, the person can see it coming. As soon as they see your uh, finger coming, they turn their head. They turn their head. Okay. Uh, me over the while you're being strangled. So the eye poke while being choked from behind. Not a good idea. Just not a good idea. Unless you're so confident that you are going to get that eye at first try. Don't even try it. You'll end up just wasting a lot of energy for nothing. So now with that said, I'm going to offer you four principles to keep in mind. Four principles to keep in mind. When you're being restrained, grabbed, choked, bear hugged, headlocked from behind. Four principles. Because if we just want to take them technique by technique, it going, we, we, we'll be here. We'll have to do like 30, 40 videos. I wouldn't even scratch the bare surface of it. Okay, And it's counterintuitive. It's not going to work for me to just stand here and talk to you about techniques. But if you keep these principles in mind, then it doesn't matter any technique, as long as they fall into those four principles, then you have a chance of getting out of this. Okay? Principle number one, take away their balance. Take away their balance. Okay? Why? Because when someone it's losing their balance. Their brain kicks in and say, whoa, 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 we are falling down. Okay. Their brain wouldn't be thinking about how to secure their hold on you or how to follow up with anything. You at least buy yourself a couple of seconds and there it will create an opening when they're staggering or stumbling. Right. So let's say someone come up to me and suddenly bear hug me, grab me a bear, bear hug and want to throw me down to the ground. Okay? I'm going to take away their center of balance by throwing 
my butt violently back into them. Okay? That allow me to gain a step of distance. It throw them off balance and allow me to turn around and confront them or run away. Yeah? If someone grab my uh, shirt collar or my shoulder in an aggressive manner, huh? all I have to do is cup my hand over the wrist and then pull it out and down. Uh, this will again shift their balance because their arms hurting. They'll go with where the pressure is. This will take them off balance. There are so many different ways of doing this. Okay. One more. If someone come up to me and try to throw their arm around my neck, or uh, let's say someone try to uh, loop their arm through my elbow like this and try to pull me back, then all I have to do is get my foot behind there, shoulder check them, yeah, throw them off balance, allow me to turn around to deal with them. So first, take away the balance if you can. The second one is take away their uh, intent. Take away from take away their intent. What do I mean by that? When a person come up and grab you from behind, their brain is thinking. I'm going to choke them until they pass out. I'm going to pull them and take them away, or I'm going to push them and put them, put them down to the ground. That's their intent. That's what they have their brain set on, right? So if I stand here and try to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu this crap, or Judo this crap, I'm betting my technique against their technique I'm betting my intent against their intent. Okay, we are working against each other in a very real fashion. They are saying, I'm going to pull you down, and I'm trying to use my technique to say, no, you are not. And it can be anyone's game, right? I, I, am, I am not guaranteed a victory. Huh? But what if I can change their intent? What if I can change their intent? So. Someone come up to me, grab me around the chest and try to throw me down on the ground. But rather than standing here and try to jujitsu this crap or judo this and try to fight his intent, I'm going to change his intent. I'm going to cut over his finger and bend his finger backward, bend his finger backward. Okay? What's happening there? Some people say, well, you break their finger, but that is not my intent. My intent is to cause as much pain as possible, the kind of pain that is different from striking, the kind of pain that is different from pinching or eye gouging, the kind of pain that sends a signal to their brain that says, if you don't do something about it really quickly, you're going to lose your finger. If you don't get out of this really quickly, your wrist is going to break. That's the kind of intent we want to put in their head. So they're intention is no longer trying to wrestle me to the ground. Their intention now is ow, 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 and trying to pull away as fast as they can. Right? By changing their intent, I make my job a lot easier. So how do we change intent? How do we change intent? I mean, I showed you guys a few ways to change the, to take away their balance. So how do we take away their intent? I already show you one. Get a hold of the finger, bend the finger back, right? make sure that you secure the wrist. Right? I want to secure the hand while bending the finger back and driving down with my weight. This is one. Okay. Second one. Second one. How to take away their intent? I already said the growing kick is a bad idea. Huh? But a growing grab is a wonderful idea. So since they're behind me anyway, I'm just going to trail my hand back into the groin. I'm not just going to hit and let go. 
I'm going to hit and latch onto it. Okay, I'm going to squeeze, squeeze, and twist. Okay, so now the brain is saying you better get away. You don't get out of this really quickly. You're going to lose your private parts. Okay, so I'm going to latch on and squeeze and squeeze and drive into them. Huh? So I change the intent from being an attacker to trying to escape. Huh? How else? Can I change their intent? Well, another easy one is if someone come up to me and throw an arm over my neck and trying to headlock me in this fashion, right? I'm going to shoot my arm up and claw my hand into their eye and face. I'm not going to. I'm not just aiming for the eyes. I'm using my hand to cup over the entire face and squeeze and pull, right? And it's not just going to claw and let go. It's claw, dig in, and twist and pull. Again, the brain is now telling them, you better get out of there. You don't get out of there, he's going to rip your face off, right? Change their intent. Take away their intent. Number three, take away their mobility. One of the things that make people behind you the most dangerous is how mobile they can be. Like I said, you try to kick them, they move you to the side or they step back. You try to hit them with your elbow, they push you forward. They're mobile. They're mobile. Their being mobile makes them able to react to what you want to do. Right? So you want to change their mobility. How do we do that? The concept is called counter grabbing. Counter grabbing. Okay. So when someone come up to me and try to headlock me, rather than trying to fight against his arms and his body weight, and having him squirming all over the place, throwing me off balance, I'm going to secure the arm and I'm going to secure his groin or belt or pant leg with my free hand, right? Why am I doing this? Because this way, when, once I secure this, then I can shift my body behind him and jostle him off balance without him being able to move away because I'm holding on to him, right? If someone trying to choke me like this, I'm going to throw myself back against them and Again, either step to one side or the other, secure a handful of their clothes uh, while securing their hand so they can't choke me. I can go work from this angle now that I have them secure. Now that I have one hand holding their clothes or their pants, one hand holding their hand, I can boom, headbutt them. Uh, boom. Now I can do the stab, stomp to the shin because they are not going anywhere. They can't push me away, I'm attached to them very firmly. Okay, now I can start stomping. Last but not least, definitely not least, last is the most important of this four, is take away their advantage. Take away their advantage. What is their advantage? Well, most likely he's going to be bigger than you are. Most of the time he's going to be someone bigger, stronger, heavier, uh, that's going to be attacking you. Very rarely it's going to be someone smaller. So assume that they're bigger than you, stronger than you, taller than you, and they're behind you. Wow, that is a lot of advantage for you to overcome with your techniques. So we are not going to rely on techniques, right? I'm not going to rely on techniques. I'm going to equalize the advantage by using whatever is available around me or on me. The moment I feel this person trying to wrestle me down to the ground, I'm just going to let him wrestle me down. I, I secure the arm right? and I let him wrestle me down to the ground. And as I'm falling down, kind of defenseless, I pull my knife out of my pocket. I pull my knife. 
uh, am I going to start trying to flare over my head? No. As soon as I pull my knife out of the pocket, I'm going to jam it into his hand, right? Slashing at his wrist, jam it into his hand, into his hand, chopping off the finger. He's going to let go. At the moment he let go, I turn around, let him have it in the face or whatever, right? I'm not promoting murder, but when you're being strangled, they already have the intention of potentially killing you. What if I don't have a knife on me, okay? I'm going to use whatever's around me for the same situation. Someone come and try to wrestle me down to the ground. I'm not going to stand here and try to jujitsu them or judo them. I just let them oh, wrestle me down to the ground. But as soon as I come down, that's a, okay, assuming this is a rock, this is my dumbbell, I come down, whatever I get my hand on, brick, rock, broken glass, I jam it right into the shin, jam it right into the side, and I come up and right into the chest, okay? Take away their advantage. Don't play their game. Also, use things like the wall or park bench, whatever, to your advantage. One of the time, someone trying to jump me from behind, they jump on my back, wrap their arm around my neck, and all I had to do was shuffle sideways and boom, slam them into the wall as hard as I could. Or I just let myself fall down to the ground, but as I'm falling, I make sure they are underneath me. So they got squished between me and the ground. Okay, learn to use whatever's available. Neutralize their advantage, because you can't do it with skills alone, unless you are uh, very, very highly skilled. This Survival Saturday, we're going to come back and talk about what if you are being struck from the back? What if they are not trying to grab you? What if they are trying to strike you instead? For now, thank you for checking out today's Tactical Tuesday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Wisdom Wednesday. Have a good night.